Good morning, everybody. How do you listen to your music? Lots of choices, aren't there? And I think we'd all agree that the technologies for listening to music have come and gone. And it was on this date in 1983, March 2, that the CD came out in our country. And maybe some of you still have a few CDs floating around and maybe your CD player. In 1877, Thomas Edison invented the first device to ever record and play back sound, the tinfoil phonograph. In 1883, the piano roll was invented, and you can see some older piano rolls in the middle and on the right, and the company in this ad, QRS, still makes piano rolls. I guess they sell thousands a year, so who knew? Well, Mr. Berliner got the patent for the 78 RPM record. They were made out of all kinds of things, like hard rubber. Uh, records came in all kinds of sizes, uh, different uh, circumferences and such. And in 1900, more or less, the wire recorder came out. And if you look carefully, you can see a thin wire along the playhead on this machine. But audio sound uh, reproduction really took a step forward with the Germans in the 1930s. They invented the first reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And during World War II, one of our soldiers came across one of these. He was a, a sound engineer, and when he came back to the uh, United States after the war, he started Ampex. And if you look carefully at this reel-to-reel, -reel, you can see the Ampex name. And one of the engineers on his uh, staff was Mr. Dolby. We associate that with Dolby surround sound, but he was an Ampex guy. And by the time we get into the 60s, 70s, reel-to-reels were actually quite common. You didn't find them only in recording studios, but people had them at home or in their dorm rooms. So back to the 1940s, the LP record came out in 1948. Columbia had been working on it for a while, but World War II slowed it down. And when they were first uh, submitted to the public, it was a big deal. And after a while, everybody had a record player, and they bought LPs, albums, huge record stores in the big cities, even in small towns you had record stores, where you could also get the little brother of the LP, which was the 45. The one-hit wonder, right? The A-side and the B-side. Put that on your record player. In 1962, Philips uh, in the Netherlands came out with a compact cassette. Uh, people weren't quite sure what these were for, and they almost seemed kind of like toys, but they caught on, the tape got better, and when Sony came out with the Walkman in 1979, the, the cassette really took off, and uh, some of you might have a Walkman in a drawer somewhere. The Laserdisc, which came out in the 1970s, never really took off. I think it's because they were just too big, uh, too bulky, too clunky. Jaws was one of the first movies on Laserdisc, but again, that was a, a kind of cool idea, but it, it didn't have a lot of, lot of traction. Here's our event. The first CD comes out in our country on this date in 1983. It had been in Japan in 82. And Sony was one of the first to make a CD player. So you needed a player to play your CDs on. And a real breakthrough in the CD came in 1985 when Dire Straits CD Brothers in Arms sold over a million. That was the first CD to go to a million sales. And after that, CD sales really took off. They peaked around 2000. And like all media... How do you store them? And some of you might have a drawer full of CDs at home yet. Another thing about CDs is they were used in the early days of the computer industry when a lot of computers didn't even have hard drives. So you would have an external drive like this TRS-80 from Radio Shack where you would have your data. Now hard drives are plenty big so you don't need that anymore. So we have all kinds of ways to listen to music. I think we'd all agree that technology is pretty good. And the CD was one of the steps forward in great sound reproduction.